Hello everyone, it's been a while since I've done a video on Spigot, and today I wanted to do a video setting up a 1.20 server and installing a couple plugins. I know a lot of people with the new Minecraft update love playing around with friends and everything, so I just wanted to go through a quick update and install on how to do this properly without downloading the Spigot jars through websites, which you're not actually supposed to do. So let's go ahead and jump straight into this. There's a couple things you're going to need. You're going to need Spigot 1.20, and I'll show you how to build that in just a minute. But in order to get that to work, you're going to need Java 17. Java 17 is required for 1.20, so you can go ahead and download it from here if you don't have it installed already on your computer. I'll leave a link down in the description to everything you're going to need today. So just go ahead and download Java 17 and make sure that's installed. And then you're going to need build tools, and this is just the way that Spigot is built. So this will also be down in the description. All you have to do when you get here is click this jar button that says build tools.jar, and it will go ahead and download to your files as well very easy so let's go ahead and move this to the side of the screen and obviously you're going to need minecraft 1.20 otherwise you can't join the server um what i recommend doing in a couple ways is if you are using like OneDrive or something on your desktop don't use your desktop to do this if you have OneDrive or like dropbox it's not going to work in those you need a desktop that is not hosted on the cloud so if you do have that, use your C drive or something. But for this, to keep it easy, I'm going to use my desktop. And I'm going to create a folder called build tools, all one word. Don't have to do anything. And maybe I could name it build tools too, because I already have a build tools one folder. And in here, here's what you're going to do. You're going to drag this build tools jar over here. And you're just going to click this previous locations button. Actually, no, you're going to click this other arrow up here um, in the top right hand corner. Go to view and make sure file name extensions is clicked on. The reason we're going to do this is because we're going to need to make a start.bat file in a couple minutes, and that's going to be important. So go ahead and keep that open. Rename this file, and then you're just going to delete it till it's just buildtools.jar without any ones or anything like that. That will depend on what you have downloaded. Now, what you're going to do here, as long as you have Java installed, this is going to be pretty easy. You're going to go down to your search bar and type command, and it's going to open up a command prompt. In here, you're going to go ahead and first copy the name of your directory. So to copy it, you just click into this directory, right click and press copy. Go over here to your command prompt and type CD space and right click and that will paste in your directory there and press enter. And then you can see it is now inside of this directory itself, which is in here. You're gonna go ahead and go to the description or to the build tools wiki and copy the java-r build tools rev 1.20 and right click that in here as well and press enter. Now it's gonna go ahead and download and install all of the files you're going to need for build tools. And what this is gonna do, and it's gonna take a couple minutes to do because there's a lot of files, is it's gonna to build together Spigot and then it's going to give you the jar that's actually gonna be running your server. So you can see it's kind of working in the background. It's installing Bucket, it's gonna clone Bucket, it's gonna add all the Spigot uh, adjustments to that. And then obviously from there, you're going to have all of the changes and stuff that Spigot adds to this. You can obviously use Paper Spigot if that is something that you would like. When that build comes out, you can get that from the Paper Spigot website and skip this step. But this step is really if you want to just get Spigot correctly straight away. So I'm going to let this do its thing and I'll be right back. All right, so when it completes, it will say everything's uh, completed successfully, copying the latest jar. Here it is, Spigot 1.20. Couple reminders with this. If this failed, look at the error message, compare it to the Build Tools Wiki over on Spigot's forum, and you should be able to figure it out. If you still can't figure it out, post a comment down in the comments below, and I will uh, hopefully reply to it pretty quickly so I can help you out. Um, in terms of updating this, this is going to be updated, especially with a new version, quite often. So what I recommend doing, and you should never delete your build tools folder, mainly because you can rerun the folder and it will be much quicker. So let's say there's an update in a couple days. All you have to do is rerun the same command, keep it in the same folder. So all the files are in here. It's going to take about 30 seconds max compared to what it did for the first time that we went through it. So as long as you keep these folders in here, you're not going to have to go through the full process every single time. It will just download and update the bits that were updated since this release. But as this is brand new, expect a couple releases in the next couple days. Anyway, let's move ahead. So we are done with this command prompt. Now we're done with build tools. We can get rid of all this. Now we're gonna go into straight into how we set up the server itself now that we have the jar. So I'm gonna create a new folder on my desktop. I'm gonna do it without any spaces again. I'm just gonna call it server 1.20, very simple here. And inside this folder, we're gonna put two things. We're gonna copy over our spigot 1.20 jar and I'm gonna rename it server.jar just to keep it very easy. 
and we're going to create a new text file. And what we're going to name this text file is just going to be start. And then you can see, since we have that file name extensions on, you can see it shows the dot text. We're going to change this to dot bat, B-A-T. And if you don't see this pop up, it means that you didn't have that file name extensions on. So again, you can go into this ribbon area over here, go to view and make sure file name extensions is on because it should change into a thing that is just this. And if you try to click this right now, it's going to say this app can't run on your PC. The reason is there's no code in here. So what you're going to do is I recommend using Notepad++, but in theory, you can edit this with Notepad if you really want to, since most of you probably have Notepad. I'll go ahead and do it here for you. And we're going to paste in a very simple line that I'm also going to put in the description for you. Here it is. It's going to be Java and then the amount of RAM you want to use. This is a gigabyte and a half of RAM I have here. It's going to execute a jar called server.jar. So make sure your server.jar is named exactly like that. And then it's going to argument no GUI. The reason why it's going to have a no GUI argument is because there's a secondary GUI that the Minecraft um, server system works. And then you don't want that. You just want our one GUI. So we'll go ahead and say no GUI. Go ahead and save this file and exit out. Now, when you type the start.bat, it's going to have a lot of stuff here and say loading libraries. And you can see all the files are starting to load. And then it's going to say you need to agree to the Alula. So we're going to go ahead and open this up and switch this to true and go ahead and save this file close that window and then go ahead and start it up again and you can see we now have our server.properties everything else is going to load in here real quick it's going to load our world and everything else so we're going to go ahead and launch our server and our minecraft client as well so i'll go ahead and launch it in the background so you can see we now have plugins we now have our worlds we now have our server operators our spigot.yml everything that you need to run your server you have in here reminder if you want your friends to play with you you're going to have to port forward i'm not going to go over that in this video but the default port is 25565. You can change that right here if you need to. If it says something is already running on this port, you can either change the port or restart your computer and force close the other port um, that is being used. So that is your personal ability and preferences and everything. In your multiplayer screen, what you're going to do is you're going to add a server or go to direct connection and type localhost. That is it. You don't need a port. If you did change the port from 25565, you would add like 25566 or whatever you changed it to. But if it's 25565, all you have to do is type localhost and press enter, and then it's going to load in the world. And we are inside of our spigot world here, and you can see it is all loading in. And if we take a look at that console, you can see that our UUID of BJG Development YT has joined the server. And if we want to give us permissions, you do op, the name of your username. And now I can do slash game mode, adventure, creative, survival, etc. And I can switch into game mode and have creative and everything else. So we have successfully set up our server. It is running here in 1.20. Now I'm going to go ahead and stop the server real quick and I'm going to close this menu here and I'm going to open back up our spigot side and I'm going to install one of our plugins. These are ones that we make. If you're interested in them, I'll leave a link to them down in the description. Let's say I wanted to bring in a punishment GUI plugin or something into the server. Well, I could do that or I could load something like our paid plugin called Fate Hub in. You can pretty much download whatever you want. To keep it easy, I'm going to download a plugin that I made called Throw TNT, which makes TNT throwable. I'm going to go ahead and go through our download processes and get their latest update for 1.20. And then I'm going to go ahead and go into our plugins folder. And I'm just going to drag that TNT throw uh, jar in there. Start up our server to make sure everything has started up successfully. Take a look at your console and you should see that the plugins have loaded up as well. So it's going to go through its normal startup. It's going to be a little less now that your worlds have generated and everything. But what you're looking for is you're looking for a debug message from this. So you can see throw TNT has been enabled. Perfect. Now, when we connect to our local host server, and we can grab some TNT. It should be throwable. And I think I have to, yep, left click. So you can see now my plugin is working and I've thrown TNT in 1.20. So this is how you set it up. Hopefully this did help you out. It's pretty easy to do. Paper isn't out yet, but when they release it, you can skip that build tool step and go to the paper website. If you don't know what the paper website is, you can just go to papermc.io slash downloads, click paper. And when 1.20 comes out, you can download the jar directly from here and just do the start.bat part. But for now, Spigot is only available in build tools. So go ahead and check that out if you need to already. All right. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Hopefully this did help you out. And um, I hope you enjoy 1.20. See you later. This is a mistake. I know about tomorrow. I don't want to fight no more because I don't feel the need no more. No, just want to make it stop. Maybe it's something